on the Newman Jets Audio Network. This is the JetCast, the official podcast of Newman University Athletics, featuring exclusive interviews with coaches, players, administrators, and more. The JetCast podcast is brought to you by Ascension Via Christie, Donlinger Construction, Mel Hambledon Ford, Eck Agency, Dr. Brennan Lucas and Advanced Orthopedic Associates, Keystone Solid Surfaces, Big Corner Creative, Pepsi, and by iCryo Recovery and Wellness. Here's the voice of the Newman Jets, Blake Kreps. Newman basketball is back at home for the 2023 home opener this week. Looking to build some momentum as we move closer to the midpoint of the MIAA season. Second year assistant coach Kyle McElroy is with me here on episode 83 of the JetCast. Coach, welcome back on the show. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I I know that I asked Coach Allen this, you know, coming back from from the Christmas break. But how was the the Christmas break for you and your family? Uh, It was really good. Um, Went down to Houston. Saw the family. Um, my nephew's first first Christmas. So oh, a, wow. A nine-month-old in the fold now. So, uh, no, it was really good just getting away, um, seeing seeing all our wife's family is also in Houston. So, can uh, can uh, knock everyone out in a cold day span. And, um, yeah, it, it was cold down there, too, which is good. I hate I hate having to wear shorts on Christmas, which if you're in you So you area, don't – that seems – that seems like a you know not to try to pun, but that seems like a hot take. It, I think there's a lot of people who would like to wear shorts on Christmas. No, it just doesn't feel right if you drive around looking at Christmas lights and it's 85 outside. Okay, just, so so you are not a fan of like you know the the palm trees with the Christmas lights. No, I need as cold as possible on Christmas. Really? Yeah. Uh, d- how does your family think about that? Oh, they probably. Uh, it's just uh, there's been there was two or three year stretch where it was colder on Easter than it was on Christmas. Sure, and that just that just didn't does it do it for sit you? Well, with me now. Okay. Well, I know that uh, for this team, you know they've been dealing with a lot of adversity through the first semester. I've asked Coach Allen kind of how he's kind of dealt with it, compartmentalized it. How do you think this team is doing with that? I think I think um, they're doing really well. Um, you know, there's been a lot of things out of our control. And um, it's hard not to let it affect you, um, but coming together and I, you know since the since the break, especially with these last week games, I think um, we're starting to figure some things out and and get this thing going. Um, we're just looking we're just looking to push that first domino, sure, and uh, and and have it roll from there. As one of the leaders for this team, you know, obviously you got to have on court leaders too. Coach Allen's got to be a leader, but when you are trying to you know just start that domino what what do you feel like your role is in in that process Uh, i think it's just um again like slowing down um taking it you know piece by piece um yeah no a lot of the the, uh of the games haven't ended how we wanted them to um but making sure we still see the growth still see the positives um you know let our guys know how close we actually are. We're, we're two or three possessions in probably about four, five games potentially of 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 this uh, this season looking much differently. So now it's just is just staying in that mindset um, and just still attacking each day. Um, just moment by moment. An zero and two road trip for you last time out, and it was really just. You know, in the second half against Northeastern State, you played very well. You shot nearly 60% from the field in the first half, but offensively things seized up there. And, you know, looking at, I think you guys led by seven with about 10 minutes left in the game. So it was really just the last 10 minutes they hit you with that that big run to end the game. What do you think kind of gelled up for you offensively that prevented you from maybe operating as efficiently as you were in the first half. Yeah, so th- this team, again, um, I, mean, I hate using the same excuse, but I still think it's relevant, just how many new guys and how how honestly little of time they've spent playing together. Um, that Northeastern team, for the most part, returned to everyone from a team that made the conference tournament last year. Um, and just you can see in moments like that, that's where having that 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 chemistry, just that those relationships, really benefits. Where we're still developing those, Northeastern has them developed. So um, you know, as the season goes on, and then as the season turns into next year, like those are the games that that you know a team like ours will will pull 
out of because you know we know what each other's strengths are and and um, just rely on those when it gets to uh, you know crunch time. We're back here on the JetCast. We'll be here on Wednesdays every single week through most of the second semester. We'll have a week off for spring break. You can find the show Wednesdays at 6 p.m. unless the Jets are playing. If we have Newman Jets Audio Network live coverage on Wednesday, we'll bump it up and go at 1 p.m. to release these on Wednesday. And coming up on this show, we'll also be talking with Ryan Smith, the head wrestling coach. Newman has their last home wrestling event on Friday this week. The Jets men are playing on Thursday and Saturday. Doubleheader with the ladies, Missouri Western and Northwestern, uh, Northwest Missouri State coming in here to Fugate Gymnasium. And Thomas Zevgoras, I know going to be a big part of your game plan on Thursday and Saturday. He is going to be our next guest on the JetCast. And he had a, a really big stretch for you in the first semester where he put three games together and you said, oh, okay, the, this is what Coach Allen recruited him for. This is what they need. Now, I guess the question I'm going to ask him that here in a little bit too is how does he do that more consistently? What's it been like to kind of watch Thomas and his development in his first year as a Jet? Yeah, so, um, you know, getting him here and just, you know, through open gym and stuff early in the season, you know he can score it. Um, you know, his, his two years at Incarnate Word, he shot over 50%, 50 from the field. Um, you know, he has all the moves in the bag um, once he gets down there. Uh, I think for him, it's, just, it's slowing down, being confident, and then uh, really getting him to, uh, to, uh, to focus on the other side of the ball, too, um, defensively, and just make him a complete forward. Um, you know, that, that's, that's really the next step for him is just, um, you know, just – passion on both ends of the floor. Well, Stevie Smith is a guy that is, you know, he's really exploded. He's had, you know, his best offense have come in these last two or three games for him as he has led the Jets in scoring in two straight games. Stevie Strong, obviously, he's got a double-digit scoring streak that dates back to last season. But, you know, what after an injury plague start for Stevie Smith to start the year, um, what has allowed him to really get rolling this last week or, or two of the season? Yeah, so... With him, I really think it's it, his energy in practice has just translated to the games. Um, you know, he's he's a type of player that you don't necessarily need to draw stuff up for, and he's still going to get his opportunities. Um, and and really, that was the case. What two twenty point yeah. performances and and those twenty five was a career high, by the way. And those are just in the in the flow of the game. So it's it's just him being confident, taking open shots, and then teammates finding him. Um, you know, take like. Realizing, okay, this guy's got it going. Let's let's try to put him in, in good situations. Uh, defensively, it seemed like you guys played better against Northeastern State. Their shooting percentage for the whole game was somewhere just under forty percent, which I think is is probably what what about you're aiming for. Wasn't as good against Rogers State, and I know that that's been you know Coach Allen prides himself on being a defensive coach, and I know that that has not been an area that they have been as good as I think Coach Allen things that you guys need to be in order to, you know, compete for conference championships and to compete to get into the MIAA tournament. Where do you feel like this team is defensively and what positives can you take away from the NSU performance? Yeah, so the NSU game, I think I think our link bothered them. Um, you know, we, we do have some long athletic guys who can, you know, sit and guard. Um, and that's something you see in the er in early portions of the game, and then towards later, and there is some some you know trail off on that. Um, no, I I think this team's still um, scratching the surface what they can be defensively. Um, I did see growth on both sides of the ball last week, um, especially you know that that first half of the Northeastern State game. I thought um, in terms of just sitting and guarding your man, um, and and. Just following the game plan, that was probably the best half of, of defense we had played. Well, I know that one thing that we have to, you know, talk about because you are on. And I, you, we readjusted the schedule; it worked a little bit better to have you on this week instead of a later week. So coming up. Uh, if you don't know, if you missed the interview from last year, Kyle, a massive wrestling fan. And so the Royal Rumble coming up, uh, which is in, God, isn't it, it's in like India this year? No, uh, it's San Antonio. It's, oh, it is in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's in San Antonio. I thought that it was got moved overseas. Maybe, you know, I don't follow. But um, Royal Rumble coming up for you. Uh, I know that this is not going to be one that the McElroy household is going to miss. <laughs> 
anything that you want to see and any you know they always have surprise guests is one of it's kind of the hallmark of wrestlemania is an old wrestler that you never thought you'd see come back will return any you think that that might be uh that you'd like to see and that you will see this year um prediction cody Rhodes comes back and wins the Royal Rumble. wow okay and also um hometown of Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, San Antonio, Texas. Love to see him. We'll see the come Heartbreak the Rumble. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll see. We got it. We we come back from uh, from most Southerns uh, that day. So yeah, I have to get the wife to pause it for me. Yes. Yeah. Get that on. Get that on DVR. Last question for you. You've got the power of the MIAA over the last decade coming in on Saturday. You're not going to overlook Missouri Western, obviously, at all, but very difficult. We talk about the, the Griffins and the Bearcats as the Jet fans get excited for this home opener of 2023 on Thursday and Saturday. I mean, really tough test. Um, Mo West, uh, long athletic, um, a battle we had with them last year. Um, so hoping to build off that and, and finish a game. And then Northwest comes in, um, you know, they lose Trevor Hudgens, who's, I believe, I mean, probably the best point guard in the G League right now. Um, I think he's <laughs> it's kind of scary to think that he was here for four years. I think he's leading the G League in three point um, per games and percentage. But um, but just the machine they have. Um, you know, they return a bunch of guys who have won national championships before. Yep. Um, so it's just always, you know, a thrill to, to go against that and just, um, you know, we're still, you know, we're not, Coach Allen and I um, aren't too proud to say we need to learn from from other successful coaches and programs. So just anytime you can see see them, just see how they warm up, see how they execute. Um, it, it's just, it's a it's why we're in this conference. It's why we play this game. On the other hand, with the Griffins, some recent NCAA tournament success there under a very new novice head coach, but a team at this point in this season, they are actually they actually played on Tuesday this week, so they have a long week. Hopefully they'll have some tired legs coming to Wichita, but that's a team that's kind of trying to figure mm-hmm. things out. They're in the middle of the pack and, and uh, you know haven't had a bad start, but certainly not as good as maybe they would have liked to have had, but a team that's still trying to find its place among the MIAA hierarchy for this year. Yeah, just this league is brutal. Um, <laughs> you have, you have you two don't teams. Say. You have two teams with with one loss, which we have one this week and one next week, yeah. and then everyone else um, it just beats up on each other. So um, I guess the at the end of the season you want to do a little bit more of the beating up than getting beaten up is is how I look at it. So I think it's time for us to throw a couple punches. All right, well, let's see if the Jets can pull it off this week into the MIAA grinder on Thursday and Saturday. It's a 5.30 tip-off for the ladies. Doubleheader on Thursday against Missouri Western. You can watch the game on the MIAA Network, MIAA Network.com slash Newman, or of course listen to the game, NewmanJets.com slash listen, or download the Newman Athletics app on Google Play or the App Store. Follow along as the Jets take on the Griffins on Thursday. A Assistant coach Kyle McElroy, men's basketball. Thanks so much, coach. Appreciate the time and uh, good luck with Cody Rhodes. You got any money on that? <laughs> no, no money no. on the on the w- Royal Rumble. Wife just let me watch it. I think anything more than that, I might be in the doghouse. No, no problem. <laughs> Thanks so much, coach. We got Thomas Zivgaris coming up next on the Jetcast.
The big man in the middle joins us now on the JetCast as we get set for Newman and Missouri Western coming up this week. Northwest Missouri State, one of the top teams in the MIAA, of course, coming up after that. Don't know the ranking at the time that we are recording this, but we are certainly expecting them to be inside the top five and probably maybe even inside the top three in the NCAA standings. Thomas Zivgaras out of Karditsa, Greece, a 6'8 forward, averaging eight points and four rebounds a game, joins us on the show. Thomas, thanks so much for the time. appreciate you being on with us. Thank you for taking me here. You, you guys have had a lot of adversity up and down. Most of it's been off the court, not necessarily like team drama or, or anything that you guys have been able to control, but it's something that you, as a student athlete, have had to deal with. How do you feel like the team has tried to come together and, and deal with all this stuff that, you know, in a normal basketball season, obviously, is, is not something that you, you ever plan on having having to deal with. Um, what can I say is, like, um, I don't think we, uh, we have, like, a problems outside of basketball or, in, or inside the, the, the court. Like, it's basically that we we're basically a, a whole new team, um, like 14 new guys, and we have a big talent to the team. Like, everyone, like, could do a lot of things in the court, but we were like trying to figure out like how can we put all that together and like work as a team like that's that's the thing that we're really struggling uh, so far but the last like three or four games like we we start playing the way we ha we we have to play and like sharing the ball and like knowing everyone's like strengths you know like we we we, ha we are a team right now and we're playing really really good so that's why we really want to play really good now in february and in january this, this is obviously the the biggest important time of the year if yeah, you have yeah, to play a exactly pick of the time to play well this is when you want to play well you know when you see somebody uh, a guy that coach kyle has called the heartbeat of the team you know chukameka go through what he did and yes, have a yes. seizure on the court you know what was that like to go through his players and and how grateful are you that you've been able to see him back still working out still trying to come back to the team you know not don't know update on his progress for this week but um, how great has it been to just have him back around and out of his dorm room and 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 you know back to back to living life outside of a of a bed for for a change oh yeah uh, Tsuka is, is a great kid like uh, especially um, he's close to everybody like he's helping everybody like he's he's the heart of, of the team like you said um, or coach said um, and we, we really really need need him but like um he he had this problem that he had and like we all got we all sucked with that um but he's a really he's a really a guy that gives us a lot of energy um but he he's still here like even if he's not on the court yet like I, I believe in him and he's going to get back soon and he's going to help us but he's doing everything he can right now even if he's not in the court like to give us this energy that he was giving us like every time and he's really big help for us yeah you guys you've made a little bit of adjustment too, coming to Newman stepping into a little bit different role for you and obviously a different conference different level of play how do you feel like the adjustment has been for you coming to Wichita and, and playing in the MIAA um, I'm at the MIAA is that top league in, in the country and um yeah that's that's like a big step for me you know like to um you know i'm, I'm, I'm also like still learning like you know like it's it's yeah it's the it's high, highest level in, in the in the country and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get like um and do whatever i have to do so my team gets everything from me and get better every day and yeah Obviously, last week 0-2, but as you mentioned, you have to try to take some positives away from games like that. And you had a stretch in the first semester. You put three straight games together, averaged 14 points per game against Missouri Southern, Nebraska Kearney, Fort Hayes State. Obviously, those had to feel really, really good for you. What in that stretch allowed you to, to have the success that you did offensively? Um, I mean, every game is different, and uh, every every situation, every, every play is different, and so I'm, I'm trying to, like, uh, read it, you know, like, it, basketball is read and react, and I have I have to do whatever I'm supposed to do in every each moment, you know, that passes, and yeah, yeah, play by play. <laughs> sure. Well, I, and I, what I noticed in those games, and in all those games, statistically, you had 
uh, you know, I think he had at least four or five points in all three of those games at the free throw line. So how much do you feel like you need to, to work on trying to get fouled? Because, you know, when you go to the line, at least, you know, certainly during that stretch, um, you know, you make 70% of your foul shots, you know, it's going to cost people when they put you at the line. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also, uh, I believe I'm good on drawing fouls, um, and that's really good because, um, being like let's say having some good moves in the post then the teams have to uh, adjust and like they have to double you or they have to like play you like stronger or like you know, they, they might or they might have to foul so yeah uh, it's it's a good thing that uh, yeah one thing that you feel like that you need to work on in your own game you've got this year obviously next year as well but in order to have the kind of the rest of the season you want to have and certainly to set up the senior season that you want to have what's one element of your game that you feel like you need to improve in order to kind of elevate you to the top echelon of big men in the MIAA um i would say to Move a little better without uh, without the ball, like making my teammates get open uh, better, or find more ways for them to get uh, clean, clean, open, clean shots. Uh, that's that's one of the things that I've, I've been trying to do all this time. Um, and I think for everybody, and of course for me, like this this little improvement in defense, like I have to be like almost everywhere there too, like to help help the team. So because giving stops to the team give us good offenses, you know. Final question for you. How much are you looking forward to Northwest Missouri State coming in on Saturday? But obviously you guys are not going to overlook the Missouri Western Griffins on Thursday either. I mean, both of these teams are really good. Um, um, but every game is different. And now that we uh, know that we're playing way better than we than we started because, we, like I said, we're a new team and we, we're trying to find out what, how, how can we bring all that energy and all that talent together um, to, to, to get better and do what we have to do. Um, I feel like we're, we're, we're good right now, and yeah, we just have to go in both these two games and do what we're supposed to do and what we know to do, and I think we're going to be good. Thomas Zavgaras and the Jets taking on Missouri Western on Thursday, and then a top five Northwest Missouri team on Saturday. Again, watch both the games on the MIAA Network, the MIAA Network.com slash Newman, and listen to the action on the Newman Jets Audio Network, NewmanJets.com slash listen. Thomas, we'll see you out there. Good luck on Thursday and Saturday. Thank you very much. We are talking wrestling. The Jets wrestlers are in action on Friday, their last home event of the season, taking on Nebraska Kearney. Coach Smith previews that with us next. I have a little birthday message for you to someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. So I want to encourage you to keep getting in that gym and keep working on that shot and those handles. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Wrapping up the show, not only are the Jet basketball teams back in action for the home opener, the Jets wrestling team is having their last home event of the season this week. So a very busy week out at the gate. Hopefully you'll join us Thursday for basketball, Saturday for basketball. We've got something for you on Friday as well. 7 o'clock, the Jets hosting an MIAA duel against the number two Nebraska Carney Lopers. The head coach of Jet Wrestling joins us to preview that and to talk about some Jet success earlier in 2023, Ryan Smith. Coach, good to have you back. How was the Christmas break for you? One too bad. How was yours? Uh, it was good. I, it's good to be back, though. Good to see you guys on the mat. And obviously, you know, w in wrestling, not a sport that you typically get to have a ton of home events in, in any season. You know, one to two to three. You guys have had invitationals in the past. I know that it was real special to you to be able to host the MIAA championships a few years ago when you guys were able to do that. But how much does it mean to these guys when they get one of those rare instances in a season where they're able to wrestle in their home gym, on their home mat? And, and obviously we're hoping for a lot of their home fans to be here as well. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, whenever you get to sleep in your own bed and wake up and, I mean, you're on your home mat, you got your, f your friends and family in the stands, that's, I mean, that's big time. You guys were up at the Hastings Invitational last time out. A couple of placers with Schuler and Caleb Wunsch. How do you feel like as a team the Jets did at the Hastings Invite? I think I think we wrestled well. I mean, it was a, you know, the, the competition was a little bit down um, with the majority of guys at National Duels um, this last weekend. But, no, it was a good tournament to get back in the mix and, and um, you know, break off some of that dust. And J.D. Johnson also got into round five in terms of the consolation. How, how did J.D. wrestle? J.D., I, I mean, J.D. was a little bit sick. He's, he's dropping down from weight 84, going to 74. So, um Probably not what he expected, but I mean, when you when you step back, I mean, he's right where he needs to be. How much rust do you guys typically have to knock off? Because you know, wrestling is such a weight, such a regimented, probably the most regimented sport. You know, you guys and, and cross country is the only one I can think of that really have the kind of regiment and the daily routine of terms of health, nutrition that you have to go through. But you know, you're going home for Christmas. These guys want to eat the brownies and the cookies <laughs> and the turkey and the ham and the mashed potatoes but how much do you guys have to work on you know kind of uh, I guess burning some of that off when you when you guys come back well they got to grow up sometime right <laughs> sure. so I mean the the ones that do it right they're you know they can step on that mat the first couple days and get back where they need to be um, you know there's a few of them that that um, took the hard route but you know that's <laughs> that's part of growing up a little bit and, and knowing what you need to do and just being disciplined so in terms of the discipline of this team you know what is the focus for you this time time of year you know it, it's it's wrestling season's always interesting to me it's very very short there's not a lot of time to you know change game plans or figure things out or teach right. technique it doesn't feel like to me just because you guys get started in november and you know for most of the country by the end of february unless you're going to nationals it's over for right. you so in this time of the year when you're coming back getting set for second semester as a coach how are you designing practices what are you guys working on t at this point in the season i mean honestly you're still throwing technique at them all the way through the season i mean you know like today we're doing a we're doing a couple couple rotations with the guys with individuals and and working specifically on their needs um as we come back from the hastings and get ready for you know the second stretch of the season um but really our message to the guys right now you know like like we've said before we got a very young group um you know the conversations that we are having first semester are now changing second semester because we're in the mix of it if these guys want to do something special they got to quit believing they're freshmen um that's what it comes down to so are you going to waste a year and go just go with the flow or are you going to are you going to step up and be somebody? And that's what it comes down to. Well, what are the kinds of guys, and you've had several guys who have been four-year producers for you in terms of points, you know, throughout your career here as Newman's coach, what makes the kind of freshman that is going to be that guy to say, you know what, just because I am a freshman, I'm not going to wait my turn. Right. I'm going to make a name for myself. I'm going to score for my team versus maybe the guys who maybe you do eventually figure it out, but as you say, maybe you let an opportunity slip away to, to do something special. Well, I, th I, think the, I think the biggest thing is, is, is learning from the guys that have done it before. You know, there's, we've never had a freshman, you know, a freshman All-American. We've had a freshman go to the national tournament. We've never had a freshman all-American you know Cameron Frame did it as a red shirt freshman but he wasn't a true freshman so I mean just learning from those guys leaning on those guys and and saying hey I'm not like you said I'm not waiting my turn we're gonna make it happen and it's just confidence at the end of the day you know if you got a kid that doesn't care if he gets hit in the mouth today and he wakes up the same way and he believes that he's the best in the nation, then confidence goes a long ways. It's a mental game at the end of the day. Well, so. and, and you talk about that mental game, how much, you know, it's very, very difficult to go through an entire season. They have to wrestle so much, especially when they get into events. You know, going undefeated is, is practically impossible. How important is it and how valuable is it to have a guy who can, you know, get knocked on his rear end, as you said, but then come back the next day? Day and wrestle like it never happened. Yeah, I mean it, that's I mean that's key. You have to, um, you know, because like uh, going undefeated. I mean, is that realistic? Um, you know, a few <laughs> guys, a few guys have done it, but you know that's not a that's not realistic at all. So I mean. You know, Jace Fisher is a perfect example. You know, he had a tough tournament this last weekend, coming off of an injury. 
He got he got beat up a little bit, but I guarantee he woke up this morning and said, "I'm the best in the nation." How healthy so, do you feel like you guys are right now at this point in the year? I mean, we're you know we're gonna have some we're gonna have some kids that are banged up right now. It's that's it's, kind of our, it's wrestling. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that kind of always once you're past the first month in wrestling, you've pretty much always got something that you've got to deal with. Yeah, it might be a knee today, it might be a shoulder <laughs> tomorrow, but you know what? You got you got to go out there and compete. How do you, as a coach, obviously you want your guys to wrestle their best. You, you, You'd love to have every wrestler win every match, but certainly as a team and certainly for the guys that have All-American aspirations, you want them to be wrestling their best at the end of February going into Super Regionals. As a coach, how do you get them to peak at the right time? Well, a lot of it's a lot of it's based around schedule. You know, we used to wrestle UNK and Carney right there at the end, and they kind of beat us up, and we kind of changed <laughs> our schedule around, and we kind of mixed some things up. So I um, want to make sure they're feeling good and, and you know, Doing the doing the right things day in day out to make sure they do feel good. So. Well, and you speaking of Nebraska, Carney, you have got the Lopers coming up this week on Friday. It is a seven o'clock start, and it's a very neat atmosphere. I'm assuming you guys still have the single light there in oh, the yeah. middle. The lights go dim, and you know the last time that I was at an event, and I'll be there Friday, but uh, the student section was a big part of the atmosphere. I think you guys were playing. It seems like it was senior night and Fort Hayes State, and you got the win over the Tigers. Uh, the, the last time that I re- was there. Can't wait to see Nebraska Kearney. They are a top-tier team, but talk about the atmosphere that fans should expect when they come out to the gym to see a wrestling match. Oh, we're going to do it right. We're going to turn the lights down low and, and get after it. So and Scott does a great job with the PA as well with the music and everything, and obviously you guys are not going to overlook the Lopers, one of the top MIAA wrestling teams. You know, As you have scouted this squad and, and get your team ready, what's the one mindset that they're going to have to have to have success against UNK. Oh, they're just gonna have to show up and wrestle. I mean, they're tough all the way through. I mean, you're not you're not number one, number th- you know two or three in this in the nation, and not be tough from that first match to that tenth match. So um, they're just gonna have to show up and wrestle. Seven o'clock. The sing- seven o'clock. The singlets are on for the first match at Fugate Gymnasium. The Jets and Nebraska Cardi. If you cannot make it, though, we'd love to see you out here. You can watch all the matches and all the action on the MIAA Network. Same link that you watch basketball, baseball, volleyball. It's all at the same link. The MIAA Network dot com slash Newman. And be sure you join us next week on the Jetcast. We'll have a Newman wrestler on next week's show, and hopefully, we'll be talking with him about a win over a loper this week. Coach, appreciate the time. Absolutely. Good luck to you and the Jets on Friday. Thank you. That is our show for this week. We'll be back next week again talking Newman Wrestling and we'll also be joined by Coach Drew from Women's Basketball. That's next week on the show. So until then, Blake Cripps in Wichita saying, Go Jets.